You've reached Hall in Mockery. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, I just you're wearing the same outfit as last week. What? No, That's not. silly. <laughs> what a loser. Hey everyone, this is Colin Mockery. My Don't name is Landon. Like I'm Joey. Please call in to our phone number, 319 um Gad Whip One. Oh, so they did get back to us? Yeah, everyone's loving Gad. <laughs> They're loving Gad now. We're loving Gad. He is Olaf. Olaf is back. He's got a carriage for you now, is he? <laughs> and WIP1 is WIP1 because think of a phone number, 319, mm-hmm. then there's three letters and then four letters. Wait, numbers. <laughs> there's three letters. Wait, there's three, three numbers, letters. three numbers, numbers four, four numbers. numbers. And WIP1 is the last four. Yeah. Gad WIP1. Call it. I'm serious. And there's a special someone that takes the phone call if you call. Even if you don't have anything to say, just call and listen to the message. Yeah. Because I think it'll make you say, I think I'm going to stick around and leave the boys a little message. A little message. He's going to be a little message. It's true. You're telling me now for the first time. So that would be interesting to hear from all of you. And we look forward to your calls. Mm. Unfortunately, we don't have any today because we have a packed show. We can't Uh. take any voicemails today, right? We... Hardly knew ye to the new phone number because we hope in the future to get to them. Mm -hmm. But like you said, we went over the bullet points, I'd say, right? We Mm -hmm. usually come in with what's going on and we time it out. So we say we get five minutes to this, maybe 10, right? 10. And sometimes like last week, I think we, I think last week we talked about the movie. Yeah, what was that? Um, What the heck was that? I was the... War of the Worlds, or yeah, is that the one with um, War of the Worlds? Spencer Breslin, yeah, oh, yeah, because we said we'll give like 10 minutes to War of the Worlds, and then as we were talking about it, you're like, I got something to say about Spencer Breslin. It became 15 minutes of the show, yeah, so that's that that always could happen <laughs> so basically our point is we're not going to take any calls because we know that our bullet points we have for this episode i'm sorry i can't he spencer breslin's not in war of the worlds i can't do it i can't do it why would you do this i'm time? sorry you're gonna cut this out right? it's the happening he was in the happening i guess his whole head uh, head ass blown off <laughs> the shotgun <laughs> You're gonna ki- you're gonna try to kill me. That's the old lady to Mark Wahlberg. What are you gonna do? Try to kill me? And he's like, "What? <laughs> no, the grass is gonna do that." Yeah, and then Spencer Breslin gets his whole head ass blown <laughs> off. It's crazy, man. Yeah. Oh, we were talking about Civil War. That's right, the oh, Shyamalan movie. Yeah, yeah. There's a twist. There's a twist, and it's that it's not that good. <laughs> Oh, ho, ho, ho. and A24, stop using AI to promote all your movies. That's not what New York looks like. <laughs> Chicago doesn't have two tiny towers on the river. There's one tower and it's not next to the other tower. Those are the Wilco Towers. We love Wilco, don't we? Foxtra <laughs> Tango Hotel. Just bought the $200 box set of the album at Record Store Day two weeks ago. <laughs> and by the way, why is there a big swan in the lake? Um, actually, that is true because Silver Lake... Everyone's mad about going off about all the AI that's going on. Yeah. This looks stupid. This looks stupid. And they put a big stupid swan and someone goes, um, actually, that is supposed to be there. And well, well I do agree with you, but the, the AI is bad. That is supposed to be there because everyone's got to get their little thing Everyone's in. an expert. And the dumb swan... Swan, and then someone has to go. You're stupid. You're You've right. never been to L.A. Aha! Uh-huh. <laughs> You've never been to L.A. because you're <laughs> What is that? When you land in L.A. and there's a guy like busking, oh. and he's like, "Well, I came from the city, and now I'm in a bigger city." And then someone's like, "Holy damn! That's Ed Sheeran and Jimmy <sighs> Fallon." And he's like. Sing with me. He's like, I'm done it up. Don't stop at you. 
Song Dom 70 I'm up. And Jimmy just has a tambourine and he's yeah. kind of like. Or a kid, yeah. a kid's instrument. Yeah. What if I had the roots play a kid's instrument? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I gotta drink this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, speaking of drink, we gotta crack open our. Oh my goodness. This episode of, as always, brought to you by Liquid, Liquid Death. Death. Tonight I have uh, Unparalievable. I have. What is this? Oh, it says on this side. Oh my goodness. I've been wanting to try this one. Convicted Melon. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, Yo, that's good. We love our sponsors, Liquid Death. And with almost 20 ounces of, of <laughs> Liquid Death in that can, your, your thirst is going to be murdered um, more than what? What? I mean, what? How do you make a joke out of something so disgusting, Whoa. right? You can given, say given the news from a couple weeks ago. Yeah, you can say R.I.P. Uh, Nicole. Well, you can say R.I.P. O.J. No, oh, yeah, he yeah. can rest knowing that his wife's killer is at rest. rest. Yeah, and you can sit, see that from one person, and then you see it from like nine hundred other people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, so everyone's just stealing from each other. Yeah. It's sort of the. Um, I mean, it's a pretty like. Yeah, that's the joke to make, but right. also you didn't all think of it. Yeah, I know that you're seeing it somewhere else. And then the first person I saw it from, I went, well, it, they probably didn't come up with it either. <laughs> it was just the first I saw of it. So sure, sure, sure. I need to go back and retract my like. Yeah. I have to go back and find that post about OJ and unlike it. Yeah, because I know they took it mm -hmm. from me. Yeah. That's the, that's the stuff, though. That's why we need people to... Um, I think that's why with the late night shows, they won't read. If you just submit some jokes to them, they're not going to read them because you can say, I submitted that to them. And they're like, I didn't read that. Yeah. They just have to blanket statement, say, we don't read anyone's don't send us anything. We're not going <laughs> to open it. We right? don't read them. We're like, but I came up with a joke about how Donald Trump has a bad haircut. Yeah. Here's your envelope. It's still steel steeled, <laughs> still sealed with your little spittle. Okay. Take it back. We didn't open it. Hmm. Then someone else comes in there and go, oh, I had a joke about Donald Trump and his little haircut. We hey. didn't. What? Nothing. Are you getting a phone call? No. Oh. Go ahead. We didn't what? I didn't say anything. I wish we, we could go back to last week. Yeah. Last week was so good. <laughs> Will you? Okay. So check your list because there's, there's some stuff on there that I think you're going to find pretty interesting for us to talk about. <laughs> Really? Oh, here. Okay. Uh, I did want to say, you know Guy Ritchie? <laughs> okay. Sure. Guy Ritchie, he's... I'll bite. This guy's obsessed with gentlemen. <laughs> he keeps making these goddamn... <laughs> he's got a Netflix show called The Gentleman. <laughs> he's got a movie out that's like the Ungentlemanly Warfare Council or whatever. Right. This guy's obsessed with gentlemen. He's like, what if... A... Okay. He's also obsessed with... Just making Madonna. a dumb ass name for something. Yeah. The slightly off kilter, gentlemanly, un unbelievable Britishness of young bastards. Yeah. The big old gentlemanly warfare. The slightly unhinged. It's like kind of a little quirky. Yeah. He had a movie called The Gentleman. Uh huh. And now a series on Netflix called The Gentleman with. And, and they're not that far apart. The hubba hubba hunk Theo James. Ooh. No, they're not that far apart. Uh, and then, of course, yeah, right now he has the, oh God, what's it called? What's it called? Warfare Ungentlemanly. Yeah, why don't you just type in the title exactly how it is, find it, and you can t The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Yeah, directed by Mr. Ritchie, which I'm not even saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying why? What's What's going on? Everything's gentleman with this guy. He likes the he likes the guys in suits that yeah, do that sort do of naughty the stuff. naughty stuff. Like, yeah. What if a posh Brit absolutely destroyed your dental work yeah. with a fisticuff right to the dome? It's just like that'll be an extra quid from you. I'll take the fish and chips and leave the fries. <laughs> Nah, 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 nah. I'm Theo James. Gentlemen, 
This is warfare, in it. Then it. Then it. Then it. Then it. <laughs> it's just kind of weird that within the last three years he's had like three gentlemen. Well, projects. because he tried to do co- the covenant. Yes, he did. He tried. Where Jillian Hall's like, I promise to come back for you, my translator. And you go, that that sounds good. And everyone goes, this movie's not good. Yeah. So you go, ah, I'm not going to watch that then. <laughs> and so he's like, well, I guess I could do British guys like dressing up and shooting guns again. Yeah. And we all go, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Because it is usually good. Like it's usually pretty good. Yeah, you go there. I've never seen any of them. You go to the theater and you hypothetically see Snatch, right? And I've heard that's good. Yeah. You see Lock, Stock, Lock, Stock and Smoking, Smoking Barrels, Barrels and you say, that's. I've heard that's good. Yeah. You see you see Sherlock Holmes 2 and you say, this is maybe the most confused I've ever been watching a movie. <laughs> I said out loud in the middle of it in the theater, uh-huh. I turned to the person with whom I was with and said, I do not know what's going on. <laughs> I I had no concept of what the plot was. I could not figure it out. They're just like, oh my, if you were sitting there, then that's where the bullet would have come in <laughs> if he died. I was like, what the, What? When did that come out? I mean, nigh on 15 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and I still don't know. I mean, this is a guy who's done. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's obsessed with just men. Yeah. I like it. He did a H&M commercial that's about some undies. So that's good. Beck, uh, Bend it like Beckham is in that. Yeah. This guy's crazy. He does. He does King the, Arthur. the Wrath of Man yeah. with Jason Statham. And then a couple of years later, what looks like basically the same movie as the other ones that he's doing is Operation Fortune, yeah. Rue de Guerre <laughs> with Aubrey Plaza. I did want to see this because it's funny that she's in it. Yeah, with, with old Mr. With old Statham. Yeah. Uh, so I'll check that out. But I mean, I, like I said, I don't dislike Guy Ritchie. I just think... He no. is kind of he's found where like he's he's tried to branch out a little bit. I watched his King Arthur movie and I was like, what if Guy Ritchie made a fantasy movie? And it turns out that would be bad if he did that. Well, here's the thing too with <laughs> with Operation Fortune, budget fifty million. Mm-hmm. So he's not working with a big budget. No, he's doing these little box office forty nine million. Ooh, at a loss. Yeah. Well. That one, but even and that's a small amount of money, right? King Arthur, that's got to be a big budget, right? Uh, probably not too big. Well, I don't have that information in front of me. <laughs> okay. and we are just now looking at our phones. Yeah, I just think he's he tries to do because he's made uh, critically acclaimed films in his in his uh, past. Well, he made Snatch in it, <laughs> but he kind of and Rock and Roller. By this time in his career, he's he's reached the sort of the Rolling Stones. Mm-hmm. Let's just keep putting out some. If some you like good that, old albums, yeah, we're gonna keep doing it. It just keeps them on tour, right? Keeps, keeps them on the road. Yeah, keeps you sharp a little bit, but um, you know, maybe you'll get a couple cool sequences. Mm-hmm. You'll get a couple new songs that you like. The rest of it's gonna be pretty much same old, same old. But hey, if you like it, good. Make no mistake, I like a, a song. Sure, yeah. Of course. It starts at my toes and it wrinkles my nose, nose. wherever it goes. Go, goes. Oh, or uh, soon, uh, soon I'll be seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? That, that would be a good one, right? That's With a kid. And he's beautiful. Going, soon I'll be seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, can I also tell you a little story? Uh, the other day we were uh, uh, out walking. Sure, you can tell me. Walking. Oh, we're out walking the dog. Look at this, right next to each other. Top ten on IMDb this week. Eight, the gentleman. Nine, the ungentlemanly warfare could. Uh, and then Argyle. People are just loving the sort of. Is Argyle is not Guy Ritchie? No, that's Matthew Vaughn. I it's think it's Matthew right? Vaughn. I think doing his best. Doing Ritchie. Yeah, that's the. I always get these guys confused because they're doing. Guys, similar. wake up. Guys, wake up. Vaughn is doing Richie. Vaughn's doing Richie? We simply must get to the theater, gentlemen. (laughs) 
<laughs> so we were uh, out walking to the dog, yeah. right? And we're walking by this guy, uh, guy's house. He he just had pulled in to his house, and he's getting out of his car. The older guy, probably seventies, I'd say. Mm-hmm. And the woman with whom he lives, hey. I can't say if she's a wife, sister. I won't. Ooh. I'm not going to even wager a bet. Ooh. Yeah. Then they started kissing. No, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. Well, he gets out of the. <laughs> he gets out of the car and he's got a little takeout box. Oh. And and he looks over at our dog and we're walking, just kind of wave to him. Mm-hmm. He goes. Puppy want chicken? <laughs> Puppy want chicken? And we were like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you supposed to just go, ha ha, and then keep walking? Or Well, that's what we did. Uh. Because <laughs> we stopped for a second because I didn't quite know what he said. Yeah. So we were like, what's that? <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, well, hey, yeah. He's like, Puppy want chicken? Puppy want chicken? <laughs> we are like... <laughs> And then I kind of realized what he was saying. Uh, he wants to give my puppy chicken. chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want him to do that. Mm-hmm. So then I was like, ah, ha, ha. just kind of laugh it off. And he goes, puppy want chicken. <laughs> puppy want chicken. <laughs> so we just kept walking and didn't look back. <laughs> but he did kind of seem like he wanted us to. How old is this uh, uh, Hubie Dubois type <laughs> feller? <laughs> I think I said I, he's probably in his 70s. Yeah, okay. I was just trying to get a picture of this. and Just kind of an older guy that I'm sure meant no harm, but... Maybe don't give puppy chicken, though. After the first few times when we were obviously like... Didn't hear you. Yeah. Weren't in on the joke, if it was a joke, and certainly weren't bringing the dog over to get chicken. Mm-hmm. Maybe stop saying puppy want chicken. Yeah, didn't he bring chicken home because he want? That's the other thing. I was like, that's your chicken, man. Like, don't you don't guy want chicken? I just knew if I walked over there to get puppy the chicken, he was gonna open that container and there was a gun in there. <laughs> yeah, and he just blast our head off. It's a whole, it's a whole like thing. Like Spencer Breslin. People. Was that this one? Oh God! <laughs> Do you know there's people that record like three or four episodes a day? And I can't even. It's like a six hour thing. I can't even fathom. And you can tell. Yeah. And sometimes it's kind of funny. And sometimes you go, oh, I'm not getting the cream of the crop here. Yeah. Like, you, we do this once a week and I can't think of, <laughs> I can't think of anything. Like today. Exactly. Once a week. Say, did you watch anything? Started that new Conan show. Yeah. Just the first episode. I watched a couple. Um, well, it was late. Mm. I only watched two. You Funny. Uh, yeah. Hey, did you watch Conan on Hot Ones? Oh, yeah. We put that on the TV. Yeah. I said, this is a YouTube video that deserves to be watched yep. like a movie. A mm-hmm. uh, person with whom I wish I live is stressed out <laughs> because of what's going on. Yeah. Um, it's, to me, one of the funniest things I've ever seen, I think. He is, and he is a good interviewer, uh, little Sean. Sure. And which Conan says, yes. listen to me. You are a great interviewer. <laughs> the guy's like, wow. But he he had, was no match for... He can't even... He might as well have left. <laughs> because There Co- was nothing he could do. No, it was not his fault. He it, came in and... He actually did what Conan, I think, does best, which is when he's interviewing someone who's funny... He let it happen. He gets out of the way. Mm-hmm. That's what you should be doing. And you go, obviously, he came in ready to destroy yeah. this place. Let's just, <laughs> I'm going to let him do his thing. Just a whirlwind of hilarity. But it's to bring, a, a, bring someone with you <laughs> to act. Like, bringing a person and just everything he did is it's so bananas. Funny. And it's, then, yeah. He puts, the chick, he puts the wing in his pocket when he's done with it. <laughs> to take home and then he bring i mean just to, he brings the doctor over and he's like i need the doctor again he's brought him over a couple times he's like give me your pocket i'm running out of room the amount of bits <laughs> and i don't knows? think anyone in that room they're all there just like you can't sometimes and it does it feels like the mood just struck and he 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 nailed it perfectly 
he knew this is what this is the show that the kids are watching. Younger people, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> he's, he's awesome, and he it had so many views too. I was, I mean, it's a it's a popular show, yeah. but just when you hear that he drinks, Conan was on hot ones. He drinks the he hot drinks sauce, the hottest sauce. He rubs it on his face and nipples. <laughs> And then he gives one of the most enlightening, impassioned speeches about how to find comedy yeah. <laughs> and be inspired to to be funny mm-hmm. while covered in hot sauce. <laughs> and out of his mind. And out of his mind. Read well. Read often. <laughs> Is there not humor in the Bible and a mad magazine? Just so funny. And such a perfect encapsulation of why I think he's one of, if not the funniest, to grace this brown earth. And then his new show, Conan O'Brien Must Go. Hmm. And you're thinking it's this is going to be sort of his, his updated, you know, going on location to some places. Conan Without Borders. Conan Without Borders. This is a whatever, yeah. sort of a reboot of that idea. Yeah. Fine. If it is, great. Hmm? But there's more to it. And he's finding these people that have been he's talked to on the podcast, yeah. and going into their house and destroying their house, <laughs> yeah. And it's awesome. He's licking someone's face, and the woman with whom which I live, she's like, he's a sixty because <laughs> you'd forget. <laughs> yeah, he is a middle aged. He's doing the same stuff, and I go, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that gives me hope. Yeah. That someone double my age is still doing just crazy, stupid stuff. Yeah. Well, in the next episode, he's even more, he's throwing himself around. He's rolling around on the ground. And I said, Jesus, he is old. I mean, he's. And he's tall. Yeah. To be doing all that stuff. He's just a huge person. Yeah. But you can see when he knows he's killing it. In the first episode, there's the knitting circle. Yeah. And they are love. He's just. Yeah. Eating, I'm like, that's perfect. That's what you <laughs> want and don't want to give him mm-hmm. because he's just going to keep He'll going never further stop. and further. He can't stop. He can't stop for the love of God. <laughs> so there's that. If you got if you guys have TV, you could watch that. <laughs> I mean, what else is in the news? What else? Yeah. What else? What else? Oh God. Just keep in mind we have to fill about ten more minutes because yeah. of we don't have to fill more ten more minutes. We have to get uh you know, I'll I'll say this also. We're talking about um What's that movie? Argyle. Yeah. And they're talking about it on another podcast that I listened to with Scott Ackerman and mm-hmm. Paul F. Tompkins. And Scott was talking about the movie and he says, Argyle, he's like, it's it has a uh, Dua Lipa and John Cena. And right away Paul goes, Oh, are there any actors in the movie? Because <laughs> <laughs> it is one of those weird, like just putting just putting celebrities in. Just pudding. <laughs> that's a good, that should be, it's just pudding. It's sort of the, you know, we're doing the all natural thing, right? The peanut butter that says it's no stir yeah. and it's just a lie. Yeah. Every time you open it, you have to stir. I bought some some peanut butter from Costco. The two, and everything there is big. big. Everything's bigger at Costco. Big. So you want one jar, you have to buy two jars. Yeah. It says no stir. I open it, the top uh, half an inch to three quarters of an inch is oil, all yeah. oil. Yeah. The rest of it is so dense <laughs> that it is impossible to stir past like two or three inches. That's why they said no stir. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't. Just, you can't. Yeah. And then here's something I've never seen on peanut butter. Here's something. <laughs> here's something. Can we check it out? It says refrigerate after opening. What? So the the peanut butter says refrigerate no. after opening. No. What is it? Goober? That's. Did you get a little? It was Kirkland. You get a little jelly. No, there's in your no jelly butter? in my peanut butter. <laughs> hey, I got. Hey, I got a little peanut butter in, in your jelly. It's Kirkland um, brand. Kirkland brand, just peanut butter, creamy peanut butter. Refrigerate after opening. Creamy. I put it in the fridge. So now it's hard. It's hard. I can't stir it. It's hard and cold. I can't put it on bread because it's it's just solid. Okay, now you're sounding like a penthouse magazine. So then you got to get it out like it's Buddha. A penthouse after dark, maybe. Yeah, that's... Or uh, Adventures of Playboy Land or whatever. Like, I was on the subway and the lights went out. <laughs> you ever read one of these things? And no. Your uncle's uh, 
bathroom. I was on the subway and the lights went out. And I felt someone's hand go down my trousers. So I put my hand down her trousers. And you're reading it going, oh, this is fake. Yeah. <laughs> the lights didn't go out on the subway and immediately someone, someone grabs your trous- hot dog. Trousered you. <laughs> no, no, that's not happening. That's not happening. But you're reading it going, maybe someday someone with their grimy hand. Someone whose hand is touching the dirtiest thing you could touch. I mean. The handlebar, right, of the subway. They've got their hand in the little knitted thing. Yeah. The little loop that can know, cannot be cleaned. No. Cannot be sanitized in any way. The first thing that happens when the lights go out, instead of thinking, I'm going to die, they take their hand off that <laughs> thing and shove it down your trousers. I'm sure, here's the thing. I'm sure it's happened, but you know who's on the subway. Yeah. It's not always going to be... Yeah, they might think they probably in their head was like, "It's that, it's that pretty it little that, brunette across the way yeah. from me, right?" And then the lights come back on, and it's <laughs> it's Beetlejuice from uh, the Howard Stern show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he is down there playing pocket pool in someone else's domain. <laughs> so that's what can happen, right? Yeah, but that's why we read those things to learn. Read well, read often. <laughs> Right? Absolutely. <laughs> Is there not comedy in the Iliad? Mm-hmm. And the Odyssey? And, and the-, the Penthouse After Dark <laughs> series of articles? There is humor in the Iliad because of freaking Homer's in there. Yeah. Oh, don't <laughs> send me on this track. Did someone say Trek? Oh, here we go. Now we're starting. Now, okay, now we've got four four <laughs> seconds left in the show, so we've hit upon something. Here we go. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're not watching the video, I'm doing the classic Star Trek "Hey, how are you?" sign, <laughs> where you split those fingers. This is kind of this is this looks like something you'd do in a penthouse after dark book, right? <laughs> this stands for something else in those books. Uh, yeah. I think what you also have to know is that. We've been hanging out now for about three plus hours before yeah. this, and we watched a video. <laughs> we watched something that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I don't know if I've if I've laughed harder than that. It has been probably ten years. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've laughed as hard. I stopped laughing and I said something's wrong. <laughs> Something hurts inside of me. I've done something wrong to my throat. Oh. I feel like I'm going to throw up. It hurt to, I couldn't stop. It was one of those, like, this, when you think of well, laughing gas, wouldn't it be scary? It was one of those where you go, yeah. it would be scary. It would be. I can't, I can't stop. stop. This is so damn funny. So we're juiced out. Nothing juiced. we say here can give you as much juice as as much juice as we got. That's earlier. the thing. And the juice, of course, is loose. Well, the juice is loose. And rest in peace. They've said it twice, right? He says, the juice is loose. And now, like you said, now that seems off color to say that in the movie, right? Mm. To say the juice is loose when we know that OJ can finally rest at peace, knowing his wife's killer is dead. Man, (laughs) that's so good. That's good. That's That's funny. I was actually, you know what is funny? I went to a store. Finally, something um, funny. And I go down to the musty basement, right? We say, can we go down to the basement, sir? It's one of these bookstores where you have to ask permission to do anything. I know the one. Can I lift my pinky, jackass? (laughs) Can I live? No. Are you going to buy something? Maybe. Are you going to buy something? (laughs) Yeah. Then you can lift your pinky. Can I go to the basement? Mm. Yes. Leave all your books up here. I don't trust you, scum. Okay. (laughs) Go to the basement. There's a old from like 1992, uh, David, David Letterman's. Even more top 10 lists. I'll flip through this. I don't have anything else to do. Of course. Some of the funniest <laughs> shit I've ever seen. Just, it's just even written. I'm just, I was standing there laughing. And someone goes, what are you looking at? I, was, I couldn't even show them because the book is taller and skinnier than a normal book. <laughs> and I was like, there are jokes about like presidents from 30 years ago. That, 
I go, this is this is where this is where comedy ended. <laughs> kind of is, yeah. This is where they topped out. Okay, so I, I shut the skinny little book. Mm-hmm. Do I buy this for three bucks? I know it's going to be there next time. Yeah, I think I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I put it back for a little. I need something to flip through while I'm here. It's kind of just for me. That's true. You know, I like, mean, hey, you're talking to a guy who just within the last six months watched the full youtube compilation of dave letterman during the tonight show wars between (laughs) conan and leno it was a compilation of every opening monologue he did about it during the time including top 10 lists it was like four hours long i was just watching it it's so funny and the the glee with which Jay, Jay said, <laughs> just he hates Jay Leno so much, but he's also making fun of Conan. <laughs> he just loves it. And then, of course, it culminates with Conan coming on, and they have some fun. It's just good stuff. That's good. That's so what we should be doing. Check that out. <laughs> what? I mean, Watching we should just Letterman? be doing stuff that's funny. Yeah. That, yeah. And just telling people, watch this instead. <laughs> You're not happy with this? Uh, hey, me neither. <laughs> Go watch not... something funny I saw. Truth be told, I'm on a beach in Monaco right now. Oh, you are? You wouldn't you wouldn't even know that. No, I wouldn't. Well, wait a minute. Does that mean I have to put this episode out? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> cut cut the part about. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot I am in charge this week. I'll listen back to it and see what suits my needs. And maybe when you get back from Monaco, you'll have a couple extra text messages from people. You have a lot of explaining to do. Hey, like um, what's his face said? Uh, You have some explaining to do. Yeah. Bye. Bye. listening to the prescribed films podcast network home to hundreds of hours of free podcast entertainment the shows on this network all have a common goal providing you with the best discussions about movies and other forms of entertainment media the pfpn hopes to fill your ear holes with audio joy visit our website with links to all the other amazing shows at www.thepfpn.com thanks for listening